Welcome to the teaching learning section of this channel. We have heard your voice and know many of you are doing virtual learning from home and some may be back in school and need a little extra help. We're going to try to answer the call and help as much as we can with this section of our channel. So stay tuned. In this video, we're going to learn about number placement. Now, number placement is very important. It will help you with your math. If you're having to do addition, subtraction, any kind of math, you want to know your number placement so that if you're having to borrow or if you're having to do any carrying, you need to know what you're carrying and what you're borrowing. And number placement will help you to do that. So let's take a look at what the placements, what the places look like. So we're going to use some zeros just to show places, okay? Now, do you see a set? Here, I've got three zeros, and I've got one, two, three, four sets. So that's four sets of three zeros. Now these zeros, they are separated by a comma, and that's very important, especially when it comes to placement. Be aware of your commas when you're dealing with your numbers and writing numbers. If you have four or more, be sure you're using your commas. Okay, now because we've got about 12 zeros up here, I'm not going to overwhelm you guys with the 12 zeros and where they are, where they're placed. So let's, let's get rid of some of them. Okay, that looks a little better. Now we're dealing with just seven. That, I think, is doable. Now, if you're looking at this, and again, remember I told you about the pattern, now we're looking at two sets of three zeros and then we have one zero. Now I'm thinking that's going to be pretty good for you guys. So let's put some numbers in these places. Okay, I'll read this number for you. It's 7,425,283. Now you see how I read that? I read that as the commas showed me exactly the, where the placements are. So let's dive a little deeper into the placements and see what we're working with. Let's start with the number three. And that number three is sitting in the ones place. That three represents three ones. That's it. Simple, isn't it? I told you, you guys are going to get this so easy. Now, the second number we have here is a number eight. Now, where is it sitting? Let's see. It's sitting in the tens place. Now, the tens place is a really good place. It represents, the number there is representing eight tens. So, you're looking at 80. If you're, if you're doing the math in your head, which you probably are, that's 8 times 10, you've got your 80. When I read the number, and I'm going to read it again for you real quick, here you go. 7,425,000. 283. Did you hear that? 83. That 8 is going to be pronounced as an 83 because that's what that 8 represents. Now, right next to it is the number 2. Now, the number 2 is sitting in a really good spot, I'm going to say, because it's sitting in the hundreds place. I love hundreds. Anyone who would tell you who knows me knows I love hundreds. Now, that's that two represents hundreds. So we're looking at two hundreds. And again, when I read the number, you heard me say 283. That's what we're looking at on this first set. Now, let's look at the next set. And here's that important comma giving us that little break to let us know we're about to jump sets. Here we go. Okay, here the number five represents thousands place. So you're looking at 5,000. And I'm going to go ahead and read from here on down. 5,283. Now, again, that five represents five thousands. 
Now let's jump over to the next number and we're looking at another number two but this number two represents a different place. It's not representing the hundreds place it's jumped over here and now it's representing the tens of thousands place. Okay? Tens of thousands. Now I'm going to read these numbers back from two back. That's 25,283. Now again, this represents two ten thousands. So that's a lot to look at, huh? And if you're, again, doing the math in your head, which I know so many of you are, 2 times 10,000 would give you 20,000. So when I read this, I said 25,283. Okay? Let's look at the next number, which is number 4. What is it representing, you think? Well, let's find out. Okay, it's representing hundreds of thousands. Okay, so I'm going to read from four all the way down. Okay, 425,283. Okay, I'm going to repeat it. Ready? 425,200. And 83. Did you catch all of that? Now, if I jump over to the last number in our whole sets here, that's a number seven, and it's representing the biggest, largest amount there is in this whole set. You ready? Here we go. It's representing millions. So now I'm going to read the whole number. And if you want, you can read it with me. You ready? Seven million four hundred twenty five thousand two hundred and eighty three. That's the whole number. Now, I want you to see something else because I again love patterns. If you look at your first set, we had hundreds, tens, and ones. When we look at the second set, notice you're looking at thousands, but look here. You have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. So we know we're dealing with thousands, but then we jump to tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Over here, we dealt with ones, and then we went from ones to tens, hundreds. We did the same thing over here. Look at this, tens, hundreds, but because it started with the thousands, it's going to be the tens, thousands, hundreds of thousands. And again, if we were to have kept all of those other zeros, the millions would take on the same pattern. Another number would have been whatever that number is, and it would have been tens of millions. And if there was another number after that one, it would have been hundreds of millions. So you see how that would go? And then once you had another number, and you you, you would actually separate it with a comma, you would jump it, and you would be in the billions. You know, this goes on and on and on. In fact, and this is a fun fact, y'all. You have the next one after the billions. You would have had trillions. You would have had quadrillions. You would have had quintrillions. Okay? Now, the trillions would have been 12 zeros or 12 places. And that's what we had in the beginning when we had all of those zeros. If we had kept going and had went to the quadrillions, we would have had 15 places. That means that would have been 15 zeros we would have had to put in places. And then if we had even went further, it would have been quintillions, which would have been 18 places. Now, I don't know if there's anybody with that kind of money out there. If they are, wow, that's all I can say. But that is what number placement is. It will help you with your math, knowing what you have to borrow or what you have to take away from. But keep everything in its place so that you know what you're looking at. It also helps with finances, knowing your finances. Again, if we were talking dollars, we would talk 
$425,283. You want to be able to do that. You don't want to say $7. You don't want to say $400. You want to know exactly what your money is. So knowing number placement will help you with that. So I hope you enjoyed this and got a lot out of it. We'll be putting more out. Look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. As a reminder, please help support this channel by subscribing and hitting that like button.